Good to get your bum out. So I'm going to record uh, my anorexia story. This is actually the second time I've recorded it because the first time I just got quite upset. Like, it's horrible thinking back over, to be honest. And also my memories of it are really quite foggy. I think your brain kind of suppresses very like painful physical, mental memories. So there's bits I just flat out don't remember, but I've like tried my best to piece it together. So I'll have another go now. <laughs> so as a child, I was a very like happy, carefree child, very active, healthy, the sort of child you'd have looked at and been like, she'll never get ill. But then thinking about my makeup, I was like, quite a perfectionist, I was an eldest child, and like my parents never put a lot of pressure on me to do well, but I kind of had that drive within myself to like make them proud and be a high achiever. My parents also broke up when I was 12, which was difficult to cope with, and like being in school, I just found it hard to fit in sometimes, so I just found being a teenager difficult, and I feel like I was kind of this perfect concoction, just like waiting for someone to strike a match, basically, and that, <laughs> kind of came in the form of my friendship group at school. And I was friends with a group of dancers. And so by nature, they were like quite skinny, kind of weight focused. And they kind of had these like little toned stomachs. <laughs> She's trying to stroke herself on the little toned stomach. And for the first time, I kind of be became aware that like bodies could be things that look nice. And I started like assigning value to skinniness. So I was diagnosed in June 2003, just before my 15th birthday. And I think between the age of like 13 and 14, I didn't really lose any weight, but I really formulated this idea that if I could be healthy, I could get a skinny little stomach and then my friends would like me and then everything would be okay. But I didn't really know what I was doing. Like, for example, I would drink orange juice by the pint because I thought, oh, that's healthy. That will make me skinny. And I just didn't realize it was full of sugars. <laughs> And my mum measured me on my 14th birthday and she said I hadn't grown at all that year. So I don't think I particularly lost weight, but I was doing odd things with food and I didn't grow. And then between the age of 14 and 15, it just completely spiraled out of control. It all happened so quickly and I lost half my body weight. Oh, by the way, I'm not going to talk about like my lowest weight or how many calories I was eating because I just, I think it'll be too triggering and I just don't think it's very helpful. So I turned 14 in August 2002, then in September went back to school for year 10, and in the UK you start your GCSEs then, which is like your first set of exams in school. And similar to weight, I started getting this really odd idea that if I could get straight A stars, my parents would be really proud of me, and then everything would be okay. And the really big thing that happened during this time is I learned what calories were, and from then it just went I'm pretty sure I actually learned about calories in a science lesson because I remember working out how much I could actually eat to make up this 2,000 calories a day. And at first I was like so excited, like, oh my God, I can eat so much food. And then I think it kind of like clicked and I was like, oh wait, if I cut back on a bit of this food, I can get a skinny little stomach. And I started counting all my calories. I was cutting it down all the time. I was going into supermarkets and just staring at the packets and reading labels. I basically became obsessed with numbers, counting calories, revising for my GCSEs, and I was becoming like more and more detached from my friends. And weirdly, I never actually weighed myself because I wasn't interested in losing weight. I just wanted to get this skinny little stomach. So it's quite hard for me to track like when I got ill. But I remember once I did stand on the scales just randomly and I was losing weight at this point and I was shocked. I was like, oh my God, why do I only weigh that? And then I was like, this needs to stop. I've got to go and eat some food. But as soon as I left, I completely forget and just go back to like cutting down my calories and eating as little as I could. It was like I was becoming detached from like what I was doing with counting calories and what was happening to my weight and my body. We went on a few family holidays in 2003 and I can kind of see the progression of my illness and just see things going from like bad to horrific basically. So for New Year's Eve that year, my dad took us skiing and I was really getting cold, but I could still ski so things couldn't have been too bad. Then in April, dad took us to California and I was getting freezing at this point. Like everyone else was in shorts and t-shirt and I was wearing two micro fleeces under my jumper. And also all my clothes had stopped fitting. So I'd had to pinch a pair of my little sister's gym shorts. She was like six, seven at the time so that I could fold my clothes into them to stop them falling down. And things like this, I'd look at it and be like, oh my God, that's not right. But I didn't then connect it to, so go and eat some food. <laughs> 
there really was just a complete disconnect for me. And I think as things got bad, I kind of just lost sight of this stomach I was aiming for. And it just became like what I had to do. And I didn't even really know like what I was doing or why I was doing it. I remember one weekend, my grandma and granddad came to stay and we took them for lunch and then went for a walk afterwards. And on the way back to the car park, there was like a slight hill and I physically couldn't keep up with my grandparents. And I was like putting all my energy into my legs, but I just couldn't make them move to keep up with them. And things like that were like, oh my God, like what the hell? I'm like really getting ill here. But I couldn't connect that to like the behaviors I was doing. And to be honest, I'd lost control. I just, I couldn't stop myself at this point. And then in May that year, my mum took us to the Isles of Scilly, which are like some small islands off the coast of Cornwall in the UK. They're beautiful. And I pretty much don't remember that holiday at all. I know I was like tired, weak, freezing cold at this point. And my head was just gone. Like apparently we'd had an appointment with the GP just before the holiday and she'd referred me to an eating disorders clinic, but they'd made my appointment in six weeks time. And my mum phoned them up on this holiday and she was just like, literally, you don't have six weeks with this girl. Like, this is why I got upset last time when I was recording. Things had gotten bad so, so quickly. And I was just denying it all the time, like lying, hiding my food. Like I was completely out of control. I totally lost control. So I came back from that holiday early because I was obsessed with my GCSEs and wanted to get back to school. Also it had gone beyond A stars at this point. I was now wanting straight 100%. But school was just getting impossible for me. Like I was missing classes because I couldn't walk there quickly enough. And some of the classrooms were just too cold for me to sit in. There was actually a conservatory in school, which is obviously really hot. And I just sat in there most of the day in my ski jacket, still freezing cold. Also, I had been going up to the food tech class before the start of school every day, just to stand and stare at the food. Cause I literally wanted to be around food all the time. I either wanted to be around food or revising. But the classroom was at the top of the tech block so you had to walk up loads of stairs and one day i like physically couldn't get up these stairs anymore and i just sat on these stairs and cried and i was like i'm 14 and i'm too weak to like walk up a flight of stairs and it kind of hit me then but then within five minutes i'd stop and just carry on with my day of counting calories rounding everything up cutting my overall number back and back and back So my mum had managed to bring this appointment forwards and we had only had a two week wait. And I remember before it drinking loads of water because I was like, oh, I am a little bit small and I don't wanna make people worry and I don't want them to make me eat. So like, let's just make it look like everything's okay. <laughs> and I still wasn't weighing myself at this point. So I genuinely had no idea what I weighed and I got on those scales and I was literally like, where is the rest of me? Like, I think everyone was pretty gobsmacked to be honest that it had got that far and I just, yeah. But what's mental is they still didn't admit me to hospital at this point. Like the advice was hospital should be avoided at all costs because it will make her iller. So my mum took time off work, obviously took me out of school and she completely calorie controlled my diet. I literally had Ensure Plus coming out my ass. <laughs> I was on so many supplement drinks. But I literally had to be watched for every second. And I was hiding food, lying, like you turned your back for a second and it would be gone. <laughs> And bless my mum and my stepdad, like as much as I absolutely hated them for it at the time, they literally saved my life. And I was going for weekly hospital appointments still, and like I saw a psychiatrist, but for example, like in my sessions with him, he asked me why I wanted to lose weight and what was wrong with me. And I was like, I don't want to lose weight, which was the truth, I genuinely didn't. And I said to him, I just want this little stomach that my friends have got. And he was like, oh right, well we'll just give you a sit-ups plan then. And I genuinely left my se sessions with a freaking exercise plan for how I could get this stomach that I'd nearly killed myself trying to get to. The doctor set me a weight target because we had a family holiday coming up to France and I had to put on 10 kilos, which my mum got me to do, like fair play to her. But I didn't know anything about BMIs at the time and it didn't mean anything to me. But like looking back at it now, you should admit me to hospital with that BMI. Like it just, it wasn't safe. And we went on this holiday to France, but it was just hell. Like I was the child from hell because I totally lost the plot. I just, I didn't care. I was hiding food, lying all the time. Like the only way I can describe it is it was like I was possessed. Like I'd literally lost control and I can't relate to it at all, but everything revolved around me and my food. And 
oh, just, it was just awful for my family. And like, it put a real strain on mine and my mum's relationship as well. And at the time I'd been living between my mum and my dad, but it just became too difficult. And so I went to live just with my dad. And also then school started in the September and I went back into year 11 to carry on with my GCSEs, still completely obsessed with school and grades. And the whole cycle started again of like losing weight, obsessively revising, just getting iller and iller. Like I lost all the weight my mum had helped me to put on. So for lunches at school, I'd started going to eat with the school nurse and like she was so lovely, but like these people just weren't trained in this. <laughs> Look at the cat. And I would basically do anything to avoid food. So like one time I actually broke into the nurse's office because I had like calorie drinks in there and I replaced them all with water. <laughs> and like every day my dad would give me my lunch and I just swapped all his stuff out and put my own stuff in and then gave it to the nurse. And she was like, is your dad really sending you in with a salad? <laughs> and then they worked out what I was doing. So dad started writing like a dated checklist that she had to check and sign and return to him but I was just forging them and making my own. And then I'd forge her signature on my dad's and give it back like, done it. And then they worked this little system out. So my dad started gaffer taping my lunch up, but I just went and bought my own gaffer tape. Like you literally could not stop me and I would go to any extremes and I was just losing weight. And I think it got to about January, 2004 and I think it had just gone too far and then they admitted me. My mum actually said at this point I'd gone hyperthermic or hyper something or other. I can't remember what it's called, but basically like, freezing in my bones like I was so cold and so I went home that night and then came into hospital the next day but like I needed it like I'd completely lost the plot I was possessed like I didn't care who I was hurting I didn't even know that it was hurting me I just I don't think I ever would have stopped which is why this has been quite difficult to think back over because obviously I can see now how ill I was at the time but then I just I didn't see it. Now, I don't have many photos of me when I was getting ill because we didn't have iPhones at the time, but this was taken on our family holiday in France. So I'm 15 at this point, um, and this is when the doctor set me that weight target to be allowed to go. And you can even see that like, I'm really bald in my head. I think you can see like that hair that grows all over your arms that I had all over my body actually, it was disgusting, yeah. And then this was the family holiday to California. And you can see what I mean by I was so cold. I was wearing like two micro fleeces here. I was freezing. I also had terrible taste in sunglasses. <laughs> I know that's not the issue. <laughs> and then this is me just before I got diagnosed. And I literally just looked like a skull. And the thing is, I could see that myself. I was like terrified of photos, reflections. Oh, mirrors were the worst thing ever. Like. When I ever did hang out with my friends in school, they'd always go and reapply their makeup in the toilets. And there was like two mirrors and a wall. And I would just stand in front of that wall all the time because I was so scared of seeing my face in a mirror. And looking back on it now, I just wish I could go and give that like 14 year old me a hug and just be like, everything's gonna be okay. Like you are fine just as you are. Yes, school's not brilliant. Yes, you're sad about your parents, but like these things pass, just don't worry. But instead, I turned to like grades and weight to try and solve my problems. And if you're a teenager and you can like relate to some of the things that I've been through, like just take the help that's given to you, accept it, be open to it, like try not to hide things because it feels like the right thing at the time, but it's just not. And like people trying to help you are just trying to make your life better and like get you away from this horrible thing that is literally just going to destroy you. And then if you're not a teenager and maybe like me, you didn't get the best help at first, like it's never too late. We've still got the rest of our lives. And in the last 15 years, I've spent periods where I have been weight restored and healthy and like out there in the world. And basically anything I've got in my life is due to the periods when I was well, like friends, a degree, a job, Brendan. So like just use the time of illness to prove to yourself like it doesn't make you happy. It doesn't give you a fulfilling life. And let's just use that as like motivation to keep going and keep getting better. It's so nice that people are enjoying these vlogs and finding them helpful. And just if there is anything I can do to help people through like the vlogs and chatting, just sharing what I've learned in my journey. And I have had some really excellent treatment. So if there's anything I can just share and help people, then I'll keep trying to do it. So I hope this has helped you get to know me a bit better. I'm sorry it's been so long. I'm going to have to break it up into parts of like getting ill, hospital treatment, 
and then like life as an adult and relapses and subsequent treatment, I think. But you can leave a comment below and I can chat with you there and I'll see you in part two.